Welcome to day two of our Easter devotional series, The Week That Changed the World. Today's reading is Matthew 21, 12 to 17. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouted in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read? From the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your praise. And he left them and went out to the city of Bethany, where he spent the night. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm sure that youngsters especially love this passage because it's so action packed. And I don't want to take away any of that drama, but I do want to just refer to Mark's account of the same event. In Mark chapter 11, he tells us something very important. He tells us that Jesus was in the temple the evening before he cleared it. In fact, Mark is very explicit. He says that he looked around and saw everything that was going on before he left for that evening. And that's important because it tells us that this clearing of the temple is not some knee-jerk reaction. It's not a spur of the moment thing. It's not as if Jesus suddenly saw something and it it made him angry. No, this was much more measured. And I think maybe my focus has been too much on the overturned tables uh, rather than what's really going on. Really, Jesus here is overturning a whole way of life. Certainly the whole way of faith. And I'm absolutely certain that when he left the temple, they put the tables back as if nothing had happened uh, and they went on as if nothing changed. But actually, everything had changed. Nothing would be the same again. And I found it interesting that in Matthew, in his account, he tells us three things that the other writers about this event don't tell us. And the first is right at the beginning. He tells us that Jesus drove out the buyers as well as the sellers. I'd always thought that he was overturning the tables because the traders were were dodgy people. They They were defrauding those faithful pilgrims. But no, Jesus drove out everyone, the buyers as well as the sellers. This change was going to affect absolutely everyone from the most noble character right down to those unscrupulous traders if they were there. And the second thing that Matthew tells us in his account is that the lame and the blind came to Jesus there where he was and he healed them. This is interesting because it's it, it, it's the only occasion we ever read of a healing taking place in the temple. A couple of commentaries that I read in preparing this told me that the lame and the blind had always been excluded from temple worship. Well, if that's true, today we've got a lovely picture that shows that anyone and everyone can now come to Jesus. And the last thing, the third thing that Matthew tells us that that others don't, is that there were children there and they were praising the Lord Jesus. And those in authority in the temple were very indignant. But Jesus took them back to one of their own sacred spiritual songs. We have it still in Psalm number eight. And he reminds them that God has ordained his praise on the lips of children and that the, that praise will one day silence the enemies of God. I think perhaps for them it was one of those days. So the temple is dead. What replaced it? 
Well, in one very real sense, you did. And I did. And everyone who has faith in the Lord Jesus did. Remember Paul writing to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, he reminds us that it's now our bodies which are temples of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in us by his Spirit. How does that happen? Well, it happens when we give our lives to Jesus. But with Easter just around the corner, we need to remind ourselves that we must we must never forget that we could never possibly give our lives to Jesus unless Jesus gave his life for us. I do pray that we will all be able to rejoice together this Easter. We hope you found today's devotional an encouragement. Tune in tomorrow to hear more about Jesus and this week that changed the world.